biggest and most dangerous mountains, the explorer Martin Hewitt, will now take on an even greater challenge. He's trying to become the first person with a disability to walk unsupported to the South Pole. Joined now by Martin and also Louis Rudd, who's director of expeditions at Shackleton, is also uh, joining Martin on the trip. Hello to you both. Hi, good morning, Kay. Good morning, Martin. Why on earth do you want to do that? This don't say because it's there. <laughs> That's an old school classic answer and a good one. However, uh, now the reason for me really is that I was injured some time ago now uh, in Afghanistan serving in the armed forces. And I think when you go through a, a life changing injury, uh, there's a lot of you know there's a lot of challenge that comes with that. And I wanted to do something that was going to try and change the perceptions of what can be achieved with disability. Uh, by doing something that had never been attempted before by anybody with a disability. Um, and so that was really what, what started it. Uh, tell us what disability you have. You don't have a right arm, am I right in saying that? Yeah, well, I've got a right arm, but it's paralysed, so I can't use it at all. So everything from my, my the right side of my chest as well, my pec's dead, uh, my right shoulder's kind of gone, and, all, and the whole limb's paralysed. Um, so, Louis, that makes it quite difficult, doesn't it? Uh, it will. It will certainly be more of a challenge. Obviously, Martin will only be able to uh, use one ski pole to help him drive forward while we're dragging these 95 kilogram hulks. But uh, we've been training a lot together over the last year, uh, predominantly here in the UK, just so I can work out, you know, where I need to uh, to assist Martin. But he's uh, he's definitely chosen to do it hardcore style by going uh, unsupported, and he's going to be hauling all of his own uh, kit and equipment as well. So this is going to be a really challenging expedition for us. And guys, this is the final stage of the Adaptive Grand Slam, is that right? Yeah, so it's part of a bigger programme, which, as you say, is the Adaptive Grand Slam. So I'm trying to climb the highest peak on each of the seven continents and walk unsupported, unassisted to both the geographic North and South Poles. Um, so after this, I've just got one more hill to do, which is a mountain called Carson's Pyramid in West Papua New Guinea, which is Australasia's highest mountain. Yeah, little hill, that one, <laughs> hardly. Um, Louis, how does... Um, planning a trip like this, um, particularly to the South Pole, differ for uh, someone um, who is disabled like Martin? Um, yeah, so we've been really probably close to two years now of, of training and planning and preparation. Uh, we've had to modify some of the equipment and clothing uh, to cater for, for Martin's disability. Um, and again, just spending a lot of time together to sort of work out where the potential risks are uh, where this disability is and you know how i need to assist that uh, we've got some slight concerns around the cold um, because obviously lacks sensation in the arm so again we'll be doing <clears throat> regular checks to make sure you know we don't get any cold weather injuries uh, in that limb as well so yes yeah, so a very different kind of challenge to where uh, to previous ones I've, I've done before yeah you've had other challenges though of course martin haven't you as part of this grand slam yeah, I have. Yeah, I mean, there's been different challenges on different expeditions. And you know, one of the whole reasons for doing this is to demonstrate how we adapt and how we improvise in order to overcome the challenges that people have presented with an injury or with a disability. Um, just, you know, for one example, the circulation in my right arm is no longer what it once was. I've now got veins doing what an, what an artery once did. And so to, to improve the, uh, the, the heat retention, as Lou said, I've got a layering system specifically on my right arm to trap the heat in using a combination of different layers. I've got merino wool, uh, prima loft and synthetic, while simultaneously keeping the core fairly cool because we don't want to overheat the core and sweat too much because as soon as you stop, you'll, you'll freeze in that environment. So there's lots of modifications in, in our kit and equipment and then climbing techniques as well. When we, when we get to the South Pole, that's just part of the expedition for us. We've then got to go and climb Mount Vincent, which is the highest mountain in Antarctica. And so there's additional things we can put in place on the mountain to provide extra safety using anchor points and screw gates to ensure that you've got that bit of security on the mountain should you, because you've only got three points of contact with the use of one arm anyway. So, yeah, there's a range of ways we have to adapt and improvise to, to get the thing done. Martin, wouldn't you just be better off sitting at home watching Homes Under the Hammer? Yeah, uh, I do get quite bored doing that. Yeah, and I think, in all seriousness, I mean, you know, what I mentioned earlier, one of the reasons I wanted to do it was. Yeah, you, you kind of, I'm very fortunate, you know, a lot of people work very hard to keep me alive when I got shot. And a lot of people and a lot of organisations have been involved in my recovery and my transition from the military into, into civilian life. And in all honesty, I think it'd be a, a waste of my life if I didn't go on to try and achieve something, having had that opportunity to, to survive. So I want to live and I want to push the boundaries and I want to facilitate that for 
other people with disabilities as well, which is what the Adaptive Grand Slam project is all about. Yeah, and Louis, climbing um, is as much a mental challenge as it is a, a physical challenge, isn't it? Uh, it certainly is, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm very much a novice mountaineer, so uh, I'll be kind of uh, the guide, I guess, when we're doing the, the ski to the South Pole. But uh, once we switch into mountaineering mode, then I'll be very much leaning on uh, Martin for his experience. Martin, I'm trying to pick up your accent. It sounds like Blackpool or somewhere like that. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little bit skewed. So I, I was born and grew up in Witness, went to university in Manchester, you know, eight years in the army, lived in different parts of the country, and I now live south of Manchester in, in Wilmslow. So it's a, it's a bit of a weird accent from different parts of the country. Yeah, very sort of northwest, though, is it? Wilmslow, that's the posh bit of Cheshire, isn't it? Um, when are you setting off? On Tuesday. So uh, we fly out on Tuesday to Chile. We do a week in Chile, um, working with a company called ALE, who run all of the safety and logistics down in Antarctica. Um, and so we've got a lot of communications checks with them, putting a lot of the crevasse fields into our mapping systems so we know what to avoid. Um, comms tests, and then we fly into Antarctica, weather dependent, hopefully on the 10th of November, and then, uh, and then get cold for a few months. Okay. Keep in touch with us, guys. Let us know how you get on. And if there's any way that we can communicate, um, I'm not sure mobile phones would work there. But if they do, um, let us know how you're getting on. And it'd be great to talk to you during your journey. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Great, no, thanks. And you can follow the whole thanks expedition on uh, shackleton.com. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Now we've got the details.